Welcome back to Black News Tonight. Heartbreak in Sierra Leone with the rising death toll following the tanker blast as we continue covering our black world and the stories making headlines from across the diaspora. The spokesperson for the West African Nations Health Ministry reports that at least 115 people have lost their lives after a petroleum tanker collision and explosion near the country's capital of Freetown on Friday. The government of Sierra Leone has since declared the incident that has left hundreds of people wounded a national disaster. The country is undergoing three days of national mourning that will extend through tomorrow. Head, heading over to East Africa, a former Nigerian president sees a window of opportunity to ending the ongoing civil war in Ethiopia. The current African Union special envoy adds that the window is limited after meeting separately with Ethiopian's prime minister and the TPLF's leader over the past few days. The U.S. special envoy to the Horn of Africa's Jeffrey Feltman is also currently in Ethiopia for talks. And the State Department reports that he has already met with Ethiopia's prime minister and African Union's special envoy and other officials. The United Nations Special Advisor on the Prevention on Genocide is also experienced and uh, actually also experienced an armed conflict mediation. That's great. But they warn that the year-long war between Ethiopian central government and opposition forces has only led to widespread human rights violations due to ethnic violence. According to the UN Special Advisor, the warring parties have limited options outside of negotiating with each other. The UN reports that 16 national staff members have been detained in Ethiopia, while six have been released. And over the border and Sudan, a court is ordering the government to end its weeks-long internet shutdown. The ruling by the district court is in the East African nation's capital city. State of Internet service must be immediately resumed after a group of lawmakers and the Consumption Consumers Protection Society of Sudan brought the case forward. But services still remain offline. Online access in Sudan has been limited countrywide for the last few weeks as support grows in opposition to the military takeover that took place late last month. Phone connections and connectivity there have also been interrupted during this time. 